everyone and welcome to Museums Under the Spotlight. I'm Alina Dima, your host, and today it is my great joy to invite you to one of the most important architectural symbols in the city of Bucharest, the capital of Romania. The Romanian Athenaeum, considered an authentic temple of arts, is an architectural jewel, the importance and merits of which had been recognized by the fact that the building is part of the European patrimony. Located on the Victory Avenue, the Romanian Athenaeum, a reckoning of the little Paris, is not only one of the most eye-catching symbols and edifices in the center of Bucharest, but it also is the house of one of the oldest and most important cultural institutions in Bucharest, the Georgianescu Philharmonic Orchestra. So so let's widely open its doors and let the magic of music charm our senses. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, today we are going to take a walk through history to discover the Temple of Arts in the very heart of Bucharest, the capital of Romania. It is one of the most important symbols of the city of Bucharest. And today, together with our host, we are going to discover the beautiful history surrounding this beautiful temple, the Romanian Athenaeum. Hello, Mr. Mihai Kojokaru, and thank you so much for having us here today. It is truly delightful to be in such an enchanting place and I cannot wait to discover all the secrets that these walls have to whisper. You're welcome. Uh, in order to begin, uh, I would like to know what is the history of the Romanian Athenaeum and when does it begin? When did the project start? Well, uh, it is a very long history. It is actually one of the oldest uh, civil buildings in Romania. And uh, as you said before, it became uh, maybe the most important symbol of Bucharest and of Romania in general, uh, from at least a cultural point of view. Uh, it started uh, when uh, Romania itself started, because uh, after the so-called small union of the Romanian lands, which happened in 1859, between Moldavia and uh, the south of Romania, Valachia. Uh, many uh, leading intellectuals and politicians uh, tried to develop as much as they could uh, the entire Romanian establishment. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 1865, uh, the so-called Society of the Romanian Athenaeum was founded. Uh, and uh, just a few years later, uh, also the Society of the Romanian Philharmonic in 1868. Uh, the Romanian Athenaeum uh, was actually part of, the, of a huge development of Bucharest as the capital of Romania, as the young capital of Romania. So, uh, after 20 years of uh, you know, straight uh, and sustained efforts, uh, the building of the Romanian Athenaeum started to be built and it lasted for only two years which was uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, a remarkable, <laughs> a remarkable achievement. achievement for those times as it is uh, today as well. And so uh, in 1888, uh, the, the Romanian Athenaeum was uh, opened for the general public uh, with a concert of the Philharmonic. But I believe that we have to, to mention uh, one of the most important topics related to the beginnings of the Romanian Athenaeum uh, in the context of Romania becoming a monarchy because uh, Prince Karol I of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen yes. uh, had just come to Romania uh, as a request of the Romanian politicians and he quickly afterwards became the first king of Romania and somehow it is thanks to him and to the royal family, the royal monarch, the, the royal dynasty of Hohenzoll and Sigmaringen that the city of Bucharest and also the whole of Romania started to develop and flourish. Right. Uh, it was back in 1866 that uh, the Prince uh, Charles, right, Karol, uh, came to Romania and uh, after 10 years we had uh, uh, the independence war, which was led by the king in, uh, in conjunction with uh, the Russian Tsar in order to 
release uh, you know uh, the uh, the uh, Romania from the uh, the Ottoman the, the Turkish occupation so uh, of course uh, uh, the development of modern uh, Romania in the second half uh, of uh, the 19th century is uh, very closely linked uh, to the monarchy from the time of uh, of Carol the first um, and even before many uh, uh, leading uh, intellectuals of Romania went to Paris to study and then came back. Exactly. And they brought back with them also uh, very important relations, trade, uh, cultural and, and so forth. And um, one of them, uh, one of the, 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 the French architects who came to Romania, uh, it was mediated by, uh, by a, a Romanian uh, prince, aristocrat, called Bibescu. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he came as a young architect to build private houses and private villas for the Romanian ar aristocracy. And uh, as he was uh, very uh, appreciated and uh, already uh, had very good connections in Romania, he uh, uh, also started to, to build this official public. Uh, buildings. Uh, among them, uh, as I mentioned before, it is the Romanian Athenaeum and the National Bank of Romania. Because we are talking about architecture and architects, we should definitely uh, speak about uh, the architectural style of the Romanian Athenaeum because it has its particularities. It doesn't look exactly like uh, a 19th century building. More likely, you would uh, think about the Greek mythology when you come right. to the center of Bucharest and you yes. find the Romanian <laughs> Athenaeum. Of course, it's an eclectic style somehow. It's a mixture of styles, but let's, uh, let's talk about that. Uh, the old uh, uh, Greek temple facade and the big dome which lies above it are actually, of course, antique uh, symbols which were very important uh, for uh, the emerging Romanian nation uh, back in the 19th century as we were trying to affirm our identity mm -hmm. in Europe. And uh, the, the essence of the Romanian identity has been traditionally linked to our Latin origin. Exactly. To the Roman antique origin so it and looks more likely like the Pantheon in right. Rome. It, it, it looks very much like the Pantheon in Rome with the round dome, with uh, the old uh, Greek facade, which of course the Romans also inherited from the Greeks. From the Greeks, exactly. And uh, so this was maybe the most important symbol, like saying, look, here we are. We present ourselves with a temple of arts in form of an antique temple, which represents our own origins Secondly, of course, it was Galeron coming from France. It was the second half of the 19th century, which is well known in architecture, uh, in the history of architecture, as a decadence, mm -hmm. uh, a period of decadence and of transition to modernity. So it was eclectic, as you said. Uh, there are many well, neoclassical elements. A little elements. bit of opulence, of course. Of course. Uh, it had uh, to be. Also, uh, uh, you, you can find elements of neo baroque architecture, many, many ornaments, many beautiful uh, details. Uh, there is also a hint of uh, Art Nouveau. Yes, and actually, even though the style is eclectic, which means it represents a mixture of different previous other styles in architecture, it's harmonic and uh, it's balanced and right. after all this is what matters right. for the viewer to be, to be impressed by the ambiance and by the acoustics because it's yeah. a concert hall after all it's meant for leisure <laughs> so it has right. to be beautiful of course as uh, you can see in the grand hall uh, all uh, the main disciplines are named and also on the on the dome on the outer dome the Romanian Philharmonic. Uh, it is directly linked to the Romanian Athenaeum because it is housed by this uh, beautiful building. And more or less, they do have the same age, if we could say that. Yes. Uh, tell me more about the Philharmonic. Well, uh, it is the most representative uh, orchestra uh, and choir 
of, of uh, Romania and uh, it, uh, it is one of the oldest uh, philharmonics in Europe. It was established back in 1868 and uh, uh, well, it uh, helped a lot to the general development of musical culture in Romania. After the First World War, um, as, uh, after the, the, the Great Union of, of Romania in 1918, at the end of the First World War, uh, it also represented uh, Romania as a uh, great uh, cultural uh, country in Eastern Europe, all over Europe and the world uh, during tours. Uh, the leading musicians uh, of the time uh, were invited to play and to conduct here. So we had people like Maurice Ravel, uh, Richard Strauss, Herbert von Karajan and many, many others uh, coming to Bucharest. So Bucharest actually became part of uh, the great chain of musical capitals of Europe. The Romanian Ateneum was witness to many historical and political events such as the first assembly of the National Parliament of Greater Romania in 1919, or after the Second World War, the new communist regime tried to show its legitimacy and its power by organizing at the Athenaeum many conferences of the Communist Party. The Athenaeum is linked to politics and to power. It is like a sanctuary for legitimacy, dressed in cultural events. For instance, George Enescu, the great Romanian composer, presented many of his works at the Athenaeum, with the king attending the venues. The drama of World War II was fully felt by this symbolic building too, as it was bombed and almost destroyed by the German troops. I would like to, to speak about another very, very interesting uh, thing that is happening right inside here, besides the concerts. Uh, there is a beautiful big fresco in the right. concert hall uh, surrounding the inside of the dome that actually represents various important episodes of the history of Romania. So uh, let's, uh, let's give some details to our viewers about the fresco. It is true that uh, the main building was built only within two years, uh, but uh, all the details, uh, all the, the other parts of, of the building which are meant to, to house uh, art exhibitions and so-called popular universities for the general education, uh, and even a cinema uh, in the basement, were actually built um, uh, in the next uh, decades, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it lasted for a while. And the fresco was actually one of the last things to be made. Uh, of course, it cost a lot of money, and um, uh, the Athenaeum uh, was uh, uh, basically built by public subscription. This is also very important to say, as it was really built by the people but not in the ideological way, you know. So, uh, for the fresco, uh, of course, there, there was a great need for money. And uh, it is said that actually the, the youth helped to build it, uh, because uh, uh, the money were gathered uh, from high school uh, boys and girls, who paid uh, one leo for a postcard, uh, for different postcards uh, presenting uh, um, some details of the uh, Ateneo. Uh, it was meant from the very beginning uh, to represent uh, the entire history of Romania. It's uh, uh, Daco Roman uh, roots, the arrival of uh, Traiano, the Roman emperor, the conquest, the Roman conquest, and then uh, little by little uh, the general uh, uh, rise and development of the Romanian uh, people in its different provinces. So, uh, there are chapters uh, which are called cultural, because there were uh, kings uh, like uh, Vasile Lupu or Matei Basarab who uh, supported very much uh, the culture. Uh, there, were the, so, uh, there is a chapter called the, the Crusades, because we had kings back in uh, the Middle Ages 
who fought Fighting yes against the, the Turks, the Turks yes. uh, and uh, the Ottoman conquest and uh, we have uh, this kind of scene so many battle scenes just like I guess in the history of any other any people. other country <laughs> the modern uh, uh, part of uh, the Romanian history um, deals with of course uh, the most important events that uh, took place uh, by the times when the Athenaeum was, was built. actually built. Mm -hmm. So the monarchy, the, the, the Hohenzollern monarchy is very well represented, the King Karol I, uh, the independence, uh, the, the war of independence and uh, after that uh, the Great Union, uh, after the, the First World War with uh, King Ferdinand and uh, Queen Mary. After World War II, the entire fresco was covered by the communist regime because the ideology changed abruptly and they didn't come to terms with many of the symbols depicted on the fresco. So, instead of just covering it partially or deleting the aspects they were not fond of, the party decided to cover the whole fresco. Only after 1966, during a restoration process, the leaders of the Communist Party decided to refresh the fresco also, and so it was revived and uncovered for the general public. The link mm -hmm. between the Athenaeum and the, the monarchy in Romania, in modern Romania, which actually helped create Romania as a nation as we know it even today, is the, the royal family. Is right. the crown, the symbol of the of crown related to the Athenaeum actually means the birth of uh, our nation. So they cannot be kept separately, which means there has been an evolution through time, throughout the years, between the royal family and the Athenaeum, starting with Karol I. Yes, um, as I mentioned before, um, the king, uh, as a honorific uh, member of the uh, society, Ateneul Roman, and um, later King Charles II, uh, as uh, the head of the uh, foundation of uh, Prince Charles, uh, supported very much uh, the building uh, itself and all the events that took place here. And uh, so, Already uh, in the 19th century, uh, all these uh, representative buildings of, of Bucharest have been linked to the monarchy. As you walk inside this building, you can see some mosaics right at the entrance behind the columns, representing some of the legendary uh, kings of Romania. And uh, the last one uh, is uh, King uh, Karol the first. If we uh, talk about uh, really contemporary times uh, when um, uh, King Mihai came back to Romania after the revolution, after all those uh, also very dramatic uh, and very um, ambiguous uh, things that happened from a political point of view, he uh, also attended uh, the concerts here. Um, he has been several times um, here for the anniversary of the royal house and uh, of his own birthday. And uh, there is a lodge right in the center of the hall, which is called the Royal Lodge, lodge which is uh, traditionally reserved for the royal family. Uh, the Athenaeum uh, plays uh, also a, an emotional you know, uh, role and uh, it occupies uh, an, em an emotional place uh, in the heart of Romanians for all those reasons. Because we are talking about emotions, they are very important and one that really bursts out the emotions in someone is music, the magical music and the Athenaeum is definitely a temple of, uh, of music. So if we were to talk about present times and also about the future, 
There is a very important event uh, that takes place here at the Athenaeum, an international event, the International Festival Giorgio Enescu, which took the name from the most famous composer and violinist uh, of Romania. Right. Tell me about this project. Well, uh, it is a project uh, which actually uh, had also uh, not only cultural but also political roots. Uh, it started uh, in 1958. It was a desire of the Communist Party uh, to present itself and socialist Romania as an open country, which was actually not by the the communist regime was constantly trying to legitimate itself by using the most representative symbols and important personalities in Romania's historical and cultural environment. So they wanted to give this festival the name of George Enescu, but he politely refused, and he didn't want to be associated with the communists. After Enescu's death, the party decided to use his name and image for its own purposes. At the beginning of the 70s, the party decided to close the festival, and it was only starting with 1995 that the festival regained its international importance, and since then it became more and more relevant, to the extent that today it is considered one of the greatest music festivals in the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I truly hope that you have enjoyed the history and magical sounds coming from this overwhelming art temple. And I guess that you can consider this as an open invitation to attend a concert at the Romanian Athenaeum. Until next time, remember to make your life a beautiful story.